Hello guys, uh, I've been MIA a little bit on the bedhead. I've been fighting this throat thing that uh, the mornings is kind of nasty and hard to talk. Uh, but by about this time of day, it starts uh, clearing up. So I thought I'd just do it a little bit later. So it's not quite bedhead. The uh, only challenge is I'm in my office at the church and there's a lot of light coming in that window beside me. So uh, hopefully you can see me and it doesn't get all washed out. But we are uh, picking things up in John chapter 13 as we continue the Holy Week. And um, we come across kind of a, a familiar story, and uh, some of my points might be kind of evident or maybe heard before, but good points nonetheless for us to dig into, as it definitely seems to be an area that the uh, church struggles with sometimes. So, uh, starting out verse 1, it says, It was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to his Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. Now, this is huge. The voice voice. Uh, we have to go into the story knowing that Jesus knows his time is at hand. That this is uh, getting to the end game. His crucifixion is coming up. He's about to be arrested. He's about to be separated from his friends. Uh, and he's very, very aware of this. And uh, so, again, anytime that we get to something at, at the end of somebody's life or at the end of um, some, uh, somebody's min ministry, they know it's going to be, be coming to a close. It's a very important time to realize that the things that they choose to do and the things they choose to say uh, mean a lot to them. So it takes on this added weight. So Jesus, in these last moments, decides he's going to show them the full extent of his love, which we would think would be the cross. But here in this story, it's now he's going to show them the full extent of his love through service, uh, which we could easily make the same case that the cross was all about service as well. But this is, this is how he showed him the full extent of his love. It said, The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he came from God and was returning to God. So in other words, he could have dealt with that situation. He could have changed that situation. He could have trumped the devil, but that was God's will. Um, this was Judas's free will choice. And so this is what he decided to do instead. It says he got up from the mill, he took off his outer clothing, and he wrapped a towel around his waist. Now this is the, an outfit of a servant. So Jesus got up from the head of the table with, with his full garments on, and he is in a place of leadership. And what should have happened by custom of just hospitality, which is not just you know something they should do, it was what the law demanded them to do. That Simon the Pharisee, who they would have been eating with at this at this time, should have been the one to have water available for people to wash their own feet at the very least, if not wash them themselves. But usually they would just have this uh, set up so that people could wash their feet for a uh, cleanliness standpoint, but also health standpoint, remembering that they, they're walking with flip-flops and sandals. They don't have you know Chuck Taylors like we do. So uh, this would be something that he would do. But Jesus got up from his place of position, his leadership position, and he took off his outer clothing and wrapped a servant's towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped un around them. And the, the language that we would find here is uh, the bathe their feet. So this isn't just a water over. This is a scrubbing down, cleaning their feet. When he came to Simon Peter, which means that he's not the, the first one. It looks like he's been done a few, so Simon knows what's going on. Simon says to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you understand. No, said Peter, you never wash my feet. But Jesus answered, Lest if I wash you, you will have no part with me. Then Lord Simon replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. It would represent the whole body. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. This whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, because he knew he was going to betray him. And that is why he said that not everyone was clean. When he finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. So this is interesting. I love this because Jesus, as the leader, took the servant role out of love. But he was still comfortable with the leadership role. There's a lot of times like leaders were just like, oh, I'm just going to serve. I'm just going to serve. I'm just going to serve. I don't want to be in charge. Nobody's in charge. Um, nobody's leading. No, no, you know, no one is the under shepherd. Uh, Jesus was very comfortable with his role of leadership. But he was also not... Uh, so unhumbled that he wasn't willing to shake that in a heartbeat to make a, a point through service. So Jesus took his place again. He went back to the head table, put on his clothes, and he says, Do you understand what I've done for you? 
You call me teacher and lord, and rightfully so, for that's what I am. Now that I, your lord and teacher, have voiced your feet, you also should voice one another's feet. If you are Christ's followers, you would do what Christ has done. Here's I've set an example so that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. So just hear the word in this. I mean, it's pretty simple. No matter what position you have, no matter what you think about yourself, no matter what you think about the person sitting at the table with you, if we show Christ's love and we follow His ways as Christ's followers, as Christians, then we will do as Christ has done. And there is no act that's below us. There is no uh, service that is not, um, you know, ab above us or below us to do. But if we are to be like Christ, then we do what He's told us to do, what He showed us to do, and that is to serve one another to get dirty in each other's lives, to be able to reach out and make a difference into those lives that, that Christ brings to our gate. So, um, and then there's also a problem with this. It says, you, you, know, you know these things now. You know, maybe you didn't know that before we started this, you know, 10-minute uh, spill, but you know this now. You know Jesus has done this. He knows He commands this of us. Now, if we know these things, now we're going to be blessed if we do them. So look around today. Look for opportunities to get your hands dirty. Look for opportunities to serve somebody else. Look for opportunities to make a difference uh, in the name of Jesus Christ and to give Him all the glory. Whether or not it's from your, your position of uh, leadership, maybe as a parent or as a spouse or as a, um, you know, within your job or whatever the case may be, but also as a servant, to be able to put that aside and not worry about what other people think or whether or not that threatens your power of authority. But just, uh, you know, again, just following the Lord. Whatever He calls you to do, do. So, uh, and I think it's kind of a good wrap-up. Last night, uh, we had our Bible study on following Jesus at the church, and uh, that's really what it comes down to, is to go, you know, be active for the Lord and do. Do whatever He puts in front of you. Go and do. The, the Lord is with you. All the power and authority belong to Him. So go, do. So, anyways, I say I'm getting washed out again. Somewhere within that, woo, there's uh, full collar Tom, there's washed out Tom, that's fun. And as you heard, I just got a little beat there to say my wife is trying to reach me on Instant Messenger. And I don't want to irritate her, so I'm going to close this here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Be blessed.